With over 35 years of ministry, Mount Zion Church is located in Clarkston, Michigan. You may have seen us while driving an I-75 just north of Great Lakes Crossing. We invite you today to join us as we go inside to hear a fresh and relevant word in this new day. Mount Zion, helping you experience the best life. God wants to give us the willpower that we could go forward and accomplish great things. How many of you guys have ever made a, a, a New Year's resolution? Now, it's not uncommon that this time of year people will start looking at exercise equipment, right? Get a gym membership. Start thinking about, man, I'm, re I'm really going to buckle down this year. I'm going to start working out. I got this elliptical. I got a treadmill. I got some new weights. I'm going to pump it up, right? Get excited about our, our and then something happens. Really start out really excited, and shoo. In about February, that stuff's really good for, for drying your clothes that can't go in the dryer. Those weights are good for, like, holding doors open, right? You know what I'm talking about? So we, we don't always have the willpower. I, I, I propose to you that maybe we should move New Year's resolutions to Lent so that we can at least keep them for 40 days. What do you think? What do you think? We can ponder that. That's something we can kick around. We have these opportunities in our lives, and, and, and you know, we can all struggle, but God, he, he, God not only gives you the will to do things, he also gives you the willpower. And I want you to really get that in your spirit this morning, that God wants to give you the willpower here to, to maybe make some things available to you that haven't been available to you in the past, or, or to work some things on your behalf that you've struggled, well, could this even work for me? Is this even possible in my life? I want you to know it's possible for you. It's possible in your life. It's possible for what God's working in you and through you. So let's, let's just commit ourselves today. Say, Lord, I want you to work in my heart. Will you make that confession with me today? Will you say, Lord, I want you to work in my heart. Lord, as we're working towards 2015, I don't want to be the same. Lord, I, I've run out of some willpower. Sometimes I find myself just worn out and out of steam, don't have the, the gas to maybe finish the race. Lord, I don't want to gas out. I, I want to finish this thing. I, I want to make it all the way to what you've got for me. Lord, I want to receive that promise that you've got for my life. So let's, as part of today's service, be so mindful that God wants to give us a new perspective. This new perspective. Let's take a look at the next verse now in Hebrews 12. It says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord, looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root or bitterness spring up, cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. God is doing a, a work in us, and, and, and that work happens as we pursue peace with all people and holiness. I want to talk about holiness this morning. Now, often we start talking about holiness we, we, we start thinking about external things. But again, I'm not talking about external things. I'm talking about what God wants to do in you so that it would come through you. See, when we pursue peace with all people and holiness, we get to what? Without which no one will see the Lord. We have an opportunity that when we see him, we'll be what? Oh, see, I gave you another shot. Should I just do all of it? You guys want to participate with me too? When you see him, you're going to be what? Like him. We have the opportunity to be like him as we see him. To get to that place, we've got to pursue peace. And we've got to have holiness working in our lives. So let, let's be a people that understand that there's this new perspective. So oftentimes we've made salvation really the goal, getting to heaven. Boy, I just want to get to heaven. If I could just get to, I'm going to do these things. And if I do these things, I get to go to heaven. It's not about just getting to heaven. It's not about having that relationship. It's literally about seeing God. I don't know about you, but I want to just get to heaven. I want to see him. I want to see his fullness. I want to see his promises. They're available to you. They're available to me. These full promises that God has for us, that we could walk in this. So there's this new perspective. God called you to be so that you can see. God called you to be what he's called you to be so that you could see the fullness of his promises. There's this new way that, that God wants to work in you. And, and oftentimes we can come defile, defiled and we can become embittered and we can miss out on what God has for us, right? We need to know that, that God is in the circumstances of every part of your life. It's a great day, I'm feeling good. Oh, the boss 
possibilities of what I could oh, do with the world at my fingertips. My imagination. Upon her head, a plaited hive of straw, which fortified her visage from the sun. Where on the thought might think, sometime it saw the carcass of beauty spent and done. Life is a performance. Do it well. For more information on our theater program, go to mountzionarts.org. All right, that'll be 375, sir. How much? I said that'll be 375. Oh, you must be thinking about just the popcorn. How much is everything? No, that covers all of it. Really? The Mount Zion Cinema offers you an affordable night out at the movies. For a list of all upcoming movies and showtimes, visit us at mountzion.org. So, babe, you seem to be enjoying the movie. Yeah, I just can't believe how little I paid for all this. I'm going to go and get some more popcorn. I want to share a story with you. Last weekend, Pastor Lauren read from Hebrews chapter 12. And he woke up in the middle of the night, or not in the middle of the night, but he woke up in the morning and it was really on his spirit. This is what I'm going to speak. This is what I'm going to share. And he knew specifically what he was going to talk about. Well, on, on Friday, I had sat with him and I had a dream a couple weeks back. And uh, I was trying to sort through this dream and what this dream really meant. And uh, I, I, there was a bunch of ministers that were there. Pastor Lauren was there in the dream. And all these different things were going on all around me. And then I just like almost turned and like saw myself. And as I saw myself, I was enclosed in a glass case. And I was there kind of sitting on a stool. And it said above the glass, it said, in case of an emergency, break glass. And there was a little hammer there. When we were kids, you had to break the glass when there was an emergency. It's now they're worried about the kids with glass, so now they got rid of the glass. You could lift, like, lift up the little plastic thing. But back in the day, you had to break the glass because there was something emergency. And so as I turned around, I saw myself in this glass container. And it was really disconcerting to me because I, I, I kind of saw myself sitting on a shelf. I saw myself kind of on the sidelines. I kind of saw myself not involved, not with an answer, not with a solution. I was just going to be, if there's an emergency, get that guy out of there. See, I had this perspective in the way that I saw myself, in the way that I perceived who I was and, and, and who I was. And, and I wasn't looking at it from a positive perspective. Well, I, I shared this with Pastor Lorne. And, and so this was back, and, and so on, he woke up, and he was going to read from Hebrews chapter 12, and we met on Monday, and, and he said, Rich, I'm so excited for you about this word that God spoke to you in that dream. And so as he shared it with me, I got excited because it afforded me the opportunity through his conversation and through a conversation with him and one of the other ministers. Sometimes you got to talk with someone, right? Anyone ever need to talk with someone? That's what we do here. We got a phone, this crazy thing. 391-6166, you can call us. We're here to help. You can reason with us. We can talk. We can counsel. And so as I was talking with one of the other ministers, and then I was talking with Pastor Lauren, it's like it really became apparent to me, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me that, Rich, you're not just seated on a shelf. I've literally got you prepared, and when there's an emergency, that glass will be broken, and you will have everything you have within you. You will be completely contained, self-sufficient, ready to go, and you will be able to do great things in me. It was like a perspective change. See, I saw myself as stuck in a glass room and frustrated and like, like I don't like, I'm like, I was like seated on the stool, like holding onto the stool, like I don't want to be in here. I'm not supposed to be the guy in the glass. I'm supposed to be the guy outside the glass. I'm supposed to be doing stuff for the kingdom of God. And here I'm stuck in this little glass jar. It was horrible because I didn't see myself the way God saw me. God looked at me and he said, no, Rich, I've prepared you. I've equipped you. Everything you have need of, it's in you. And I'm going to release you at the right time. And when I do, bam, things are going to happen. And I don't share that for me as if this is a personal story, because it is a personal story. But I'm sharing that because I believe that's for all of us. You're not set on a shelf. Some of you think, well, you know, I am getting up in my years. Some of you are thinking, well, God can't use me. God can't use people like me. No, God's prepared you. He's equipped you. You're exactly what he has need of. There are circumstances and situations that he's going to present with you to, and they're going to be exact environments for you to thrive. It's going to be exact scenarios where you're going to just break forth, and it's going to be bam. 
everything that is needed in that moment. Don't become bitter. Don't become defiled. Don't have that wrong perspective. Say, Lord, I want to operate in that kingdom perspective. I want to see, Lord, the way you see. I want to see what you're looking at. Amen. How many guys realize we need to see ourselves the way God sees us? And how many want to realize we need to, perceive, we need to perceive this earth the way the Lord perceives this earth? Sometimes we can look at what's happening here on this earth and we can think, man, there's no hope. Let's just cash this thing out. No, God sees an a, a earth full of potential, full of hope, full of expectancy of all the great things that are yet to come to pass. Let's align ourselves with his vision for the earth. Let's align ourselves with what he sees in us. And let's dream. Let's, let's have an expectation to say, Lord, I know maybe I feel like I'm sitting on the sidelines. Maybe I feel like I've been marginalized. But I'm getting ready to launch out, Lord. When there's something going on, someone come over and break the glass because I'm ready to go. And I'm going to break your glass because I think it's time for you to go. I think it's time for you to step out. But to get to this place, we've got to have a heart change. We've got to have a heart perspective change. In Matthew, it talks about it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? Do you want to see them? You got to have a perspective change. You got to have a heart perspective change. I, I meet with people, and I, I love appointments. I, I, I mentioned that earlier. I love meeting with people. Boy, I can meet with people. I can be so excited for you. I can tell you your promise. I can tell you what's going to happen next. I can be, woo, we can pray. I can feel the anointing. That was my anointing back up. You know, I can get so excited and have just such a, an expectation for you. But then sometimes in my own life, I, I don't have that. I can be so, so excited for someone else. And then I can look at a scenario like myself and be like, whoa. Nah, nah, nah. So maybe you're like me. Maybe you can be so excited for other people. And, and then in your own life, you're like, well, I don't know if this can work. Or maybe it's the other side. Maybe for you, you're like, man, God's doing great things in my life. But I'm not sure about the rest of these people. I don't know if this can work out for them. We've got to understand that God is doing something in us to give us this new perspective. And I, I can meet with people and, and talk with them, but if they don't receive something new, if they don't open their heart to a transformation, if they don't open themselves to what God is speaking about them, it's not going to have the full effect that, that is needed. If you don't open your heart to the Lord, it's not going to have the full effect. If you've ever counseled someone, you've ever tried helping someone, and they kind of fall back to what they were in, they need a new heart. And that's the experience that we get to offer people. And this morning, that's what we have an opportunity to do. We have an opportunity to open our hearts to the Lord, to receive a, a renewed perspective in him and how he sees us. Because when we see him, we'll be like him. And I want to receive that pure heart, amen, so that I can operate in the fullness of the kingdom. Because when we see him, it gives us the opportunity to walk in all that he has. Let's take a look at this next scripture now in Leviticus. It says, for I am the Lord who brings you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. What is holiness? Well, holiness has really fallen on hard times. It has. All right, that'll be 375, sir. How much? I said that'll be 375. Oh, you must be thinking about just the popcorn. Huh? How much is everything? No, that covers all of it. Really? The Mount Zion Cinema offers you an affordable night out at the movies. For a list of all upcoming movies and showtimes, visit us at mountzion.org. So, babe, you seem to be enjoying the movie. Yeah, I just can't believe how little I paid for all this. I'm going to go and get some more popcorn. When does a latte become the remedy for a long day? Or a booth, the gathering place for old friends? When can a class provide answers to life's hardest questions? It happens when a place becomes committed to improving the most important thing in your life, you. The District, just one mile north of Great Lakes Crossing, where life happens better. We're not hiding the Holy Spirit. God's doing great things in the earth, and he's doing it through the spirit that he deposited inside of you. So let's allow this transformation to take place in our hearts so that we're not hiding our flesh in religious ways, but we're allowing a transformation that takes place, and it becomes a byproduct of us seeking him. Because as you seek him, you're going to see him. And when you see him, you want to be like him. I want to be like Jesus. 
I want to be more godly. I want to have, be a better father. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better friend. I want to be a better minister. I want to have better counsel. I don't want mixture. Lord, I want this working in me. Now, I could make that my focus, right? Or I could focus on my relationship and a heart transformation that will produce the byproduct that people will just automatically be able to come and partake in. Let's operate at this next level that God wants us to talk to. So let's go move ahead now. The father of spirits of just men made perfect. In Hebrews chapter 12, furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasing us has seemed best to them, but he for our prophet that we may be partakers of his what? God's looking for a people that we be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but, af- but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness, those who've been trained by it. The father of spirits of just men made perfect. The Lord is at work in you. He's at work in your spirit, and he wants you to be perfected. He wants you to be complete. That's what that word means. We hear that all the time here at Mount Zion. God wants you to be complete. He doesn't want you to be lacking anything. He wants you to have everything that you have need of. So it's time for us to allow the Father of Spirits to to, to work in us, to work this part in us that we would operate at this next capacity, this next next level, that we'd be exercised by it. I'm a runner. I'm a runner because I like to run. I had to admit it. I had to fess up. I like going out and running. It makes me feel good. I like the endorphin afterwards. I like logging in and logging my miles. I like seeing how far I went. I like seeing how fast I went. I like seeing myself in relation to other people, how fast they went and what they accomplished. I like all of it. Now, I didn't start out that way. I started out, my wife was the actual runner in this house. And when I say runner, she's like on the verge of like elite athlete runners. So I'm not there. But I was sitting on the couch and I was eating ice cream and having chips, and she was out running, and I thought, I I better start doing something, because, well, if I'm not chasing her, someone else is going to be chasing her, right? No, I'm kidding. My covenant's not in trouble, not like that. It would take a little bit more than that, I think. But it's just sarcastic, a little fun, a little humor. So Tammy, she's fast. I mean, like, she won a half marathon. She took second place at a 25K, and, and they actually give her awards. She gets a prize. They actually pay her, because she wins. That's who she is. I'm not that. I ran my first half marathon a couple weeks back, and I had some goals for myself. I I wanted to run, on average, I wanted to run a sub seven for for 13.1 miles. So I wanted to be under seven minutes per mile for 13.1 miles. And my secondary goal was I wanted to do it in an hour and a half. So those were my two goals. And so we set out, and my wife, she had just finished uh, uh, the Detroit marathon, which she took fifth in overall out of, I don't know. Look at her. Everyone turn around and look at her. Hi. Hi, Tammy. I told her I was going to have her, I was going to put three chairs up here and have her sit over here. She's like, don't do that. So turn around. Hi, honey. It's good to see you. So she took fifth. She took third for all people 40 and older. So they paid her money again for going there and doing that. So Tammy's pacing me after she's run a marathon, which is 26.2 miles, and she's calling out my times. She's like, okay, we're at this pace. You know, if you want to move to the next level, because we had a strategy for how I was going to achieve my goal, right? Because you got to have strategies, right? So she's like, okay, we're at six, or we're at seven, you know, we're at 705. We're right where we want to be. You know, we're at mile this. We're at 657. We're right where we want to be, you know? So she's like talking me through it. And we're going and we're going and we get to that 12th mile and I'm just, I'm gassed out. And there's a guy ahead of me that I can't catch and I'm just frustrated because I'm like, I'm not going to pass this dude. And I'm, and Tammy, she's, we've already had a conversation that the 12th mile to the 13.1, the finish, she was just going to go. And she did. (laughs) And here I'm like lumbering along and she's like disappearing and I'm like doing everything I can just to keep her in my sight. You know, it's like, and she's disappeared from my sight, but and I'm thinking, I'm going to gas out. And I'm telling her I'm going to gas out. And she's like, you're not gassing out. Pass that guy and let's go as she leaves. <laughs> 
Throughout the race, she's running and we'd come up to people and, and, and she, as soon as she sees someone ahead of her, she's like, she just changes gears and like, I gotta pass this one too. So she, at one point she's like, man, I'm a bad pacer. I said, you said it, but I'm thinking it. I'm thinking it. You're not a good pacer. <laughs> so anyways, it's that last mile and I'm feeling gas and I'm running and I'm, and I'm going and I'm pushing myself and I'm not gonna quit. Although everything within me saying, quit, stop now, walk this thing in. And before you know it, I'm getting closer to this guy. And I'm getting closer to this guy and runners are really cordial, really polite. I think they just say polite things. I don't know that they mean polite things. But he says, dude, I'm dying, go for it. I'm like, I am going for it. <laughs> and from that moment on, I could see the finish thing, the balloon, whatever, the whatever it is, and I'm running everything I got. Tammy's already finished, she's sitting down, she's just having a cold drink. <laughs> I'm teasing, she's. But I, I get to that place and I just ran all the way through and, and I accomplished a goal and boy, I wanted to do it in an hour and a half. Well, I didn't get to the hour and a half. I, I missed it by 63 seconds. Isn't that a bummer? But you know what? Isn't that what goals are supposed to be? I'm going to beat that time the next time, I can tell you that. So look for my Facebook posts because the next time you see me run a half marathon, is going to be sub an hour and a half, or it's going to be the hilliest course I've ever run in my lifetime. <laughs> now, I'm sharing with you something really, really silly. And for many of you, you're like, this story does not relate to me at all. I don't even know what to do with this. I'm sharing this with you because we do things to exercise this. And the father of spirits, he's working something in here. And he's got a finish line. I did it for a little medallion, a cup that I put on the shelf. That's what I did it for. I did all that for a glass. You know, we're, we're running this race in Christ Jesus for a crown that doesn't perish, for an eternal promise. And the Father of Spirits is saying, I want to work in your heart more than I've ever needed to work in your heart before. And this might be painful. Sometimes training is painful. I mean, I was gassing out, but I knew I had it in me. I knew I had just enough left to finish that race. Sometimes you might think, man, I'm just gassing out. I'm not going to be able to finish this spiritual journey. Man, I, I knew I wasn't the Christian everyone thought I was. We can all have all these comments and all these conversations in our head about who we are. And God's saying, no, I want to give you the identity that I called you to. You know, we're in an identity crisis. If there's a problem in our generation, it's an identity crisis. And we've got to help every single person that we possibly can find their identity in Christ Jesus. That's the message of this hour. And it's got to get into your heart. It's got to get deep within you, into that inner man. If you enjoy dancing, be sure to check out Mount Zion School of Performing Arts. From hip hop to ballet, we have it all, and starting as early as ages three up through adult. Whether you're a beginner or advanced, we have something for you. So check us out online at mountzionarts.org. God might be chasing you. Last week, Pastor Warren even read the scripture that says he might even be scourging you. Yikes, who wants to be scourged? There's a corrective part to God, and he corrects us so that we can walk in that place of holiness. His correction is so that it comes to lead us to that place of, of holiness. You know, I joke that my parents were the fun police. Well, what do you think I am as a parent now? I'm the fun police. No, I don't want you throwing that hard object at your brother. That's a bad idea. 
But I got to also instruct them in the ways of God so that they get a relationship with Christ's birth in their hearts so that they can operate in holiness, that they can begin to make choices for their kingdom. One of the things I love about Mount Zion is we've got an amazing children's ministry with dedicated, committed volunteers that show up week in and week out to make a difference with our kids. They're pouring a spiritual seed into them. We've got an amazing youth ministry, a student ministry. And they're doing awesome things for our kids. I can't wait for my sons and my daughter to grow up to be a part of the student ministries. Ashley's doing amazing things with young adults. Mount Zion takes a full approach to this. We want our kids to be exercised. We want our kids to be trained. We want our kids to be equipped. And that's what God's doing in this hour. And he's doing it in you as he's doing it in them. But there's this responsibility. Let's take a look at this scripture now in Hebrews chapter 12. It says, lest there be any fornicator or profane person who like Esau for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. We pick up on this story. And here, Esau, he was his dad's favorite because he could hunt. He could go get and kill and bring it back and you could eat it, right? Yeah, because food's great. So here he has a favorite. Well, mom had a favorite too. Mom's favorite was Jacob because he liked to hide out in the tent. He was a mama's boy. There was a little dynamic working in that household. There was a little dynamic that was working there and, 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 and the parents had picked favorites. I don't know how healthy that was. But all the way back to the very beginning, we've got dysfunctions. So if there's a little dysfunction in your world, it's normal. It's okay, because God is the author and the finisher of your what? Your faith. God's in the middle of it. So you're walking through a little dysfunction. Well, Esau had this thing working in him. He comes in from the field, and he's so hungry. He's literally famished. Have you ever had that time? It's like, I need to eat. I will not make it 15 more minutes. I must have food now. That was Esau. I got to eat right this minute. So he says to his brother, Jacob, he says, give me something to eat. And Jacob, being the heel catcher, supplanter, deceiver that he was, said, sell me your birthright. I'll give you all the food you want. Well, Esau was a fornicator. It doesn't mean that he was having a sexual relationship. It just means that he was one of those people that didn't want to take responsibility for this gift that he'd received. He'd received this amazing gift. See, fornication is for people that don't want to pay the price. See, this band, this ring, this covenant that I've entered into, it affords me the opportunity to have that sexual relationship. But when you're not willing to put in the work, when you're not willing to be responsible for your covenant, you're a fornicator. And so we've got to understand there's a work part to this. There's a, there's a part we've got to be willing to invest in this. We've got to take responsibility. Reality is Esau took his relationship with God very lightly. He took his, this very lightly. He didn't esteem it. And he figured since he didn't take it that seriously, God wouldn't take it that seriously. I want you to understand God takes things much more seriously than we do. And so we've got to have this working in us. Now, I'm not, again, I'm not talking about holiness from the outside. I'm talking about holiness from the inside. Because when we see him, we'll be like him. But if you want to see him, you got to pursue peace. You got to pursue holiness. You got to allow something to work on the inside if you want to see God. If you would like further information, we also invite you to visit us on the web at mountzion.org, where you can hear more of Pastor Lauren's messages and find out about our ministries. If you're visiting the Metro Detroit area, we invite you to worship with us at Mount Zion Church. Thanks again for watching.